Yo, 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 what's going on with y'all? It's your boy Money Making Marlo. You know what I'm saying? I got a special guest with me here today. Who I got with me here today? The real Risa. The real motherfucking Risa. <laughs> Before I get into anything, I'm going to start off how I always start off. How you feeling? What's going on? I'm good. I'm You're good. good? Just, your week's been good? Yeah. Okay, okay. What's been going on? Just making money, honestly. Just getting the business started. By the time this comes out, um... It's going to be up there. We okay. working. We working. It, it's going to be out. This going to be on like January. So you got time. All right. You know? Yeah, I know. It's going to, the business is going to be booming by then. Okay. So first things first, before I ask you anything about what you do, I want your thoughts on mental health. Oh my I God. Because November is Men's Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I want to know your thoughts on it. Do, do niggas speak on it as they supposed to? You know what I'm saying? What do you think? I think mental health is such a... Um, honestly, in the in the black community, it's not mm. talked about enough. But I'm very big on it. Like, all my friends, like, they come to me if you need anything, if you need to talk, like, no matter the hour. Mm. I'm always there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm very emotional, so I, like, I get it when other people, like, are going through it. Mm. Like, I can feel those emotions. So I sympathize with people like that, um, but so yeah, do, I know. do you think, I, um, do you think black males should stop keeping things to themselves? Because you know, my bad, we good, we good. You know how, um, you know how whenever niggas are, how do you say, it? whenever niggas are out more outspoken, speak about what they're going through, they get called soft. Do you think that's no, why I guys hate, don't like? No, I hate when people do that. Honestly, when people do that, it actually pisses me off. Mm. Like, that's the one thing. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll diss niggas on everything. But when it comes to mental health, I, I won't touch on that. Because mm. it's very, like, personal. Oh, my God. Let me stop. <laughs> Anyways. It's a touchy. No, nah, no. Nah, that's good. Because, like, it is a touchy subject. And um, coming from, especially me, because I like to talk. My homies call me the soft one because I'm the one. Like Are you, you said, really? No, nah, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> I'm the one. Whenever they go into women issues, parent issues, yeah. they like to talk to me because I don't judge. You know what I'm oh, saying? That's I, good. There, there's niggas where they'll always help you, but they're like, man, soft ass nigga. And then yeah. they help you. Yeah, it's those yeah, little yeah. side comments that like kind of really shoot niggas down. Yeah. And, like, it makes you not want to talk about it. Exactly. So, me, if, if it takes me being soft for you to be comfortable enough to come up to me and talk to me about your issue, I'll be soft, you know? Yeah. It's just. I feel like something like this is not talked about enough. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, that's for sure. I feel like more men should be comfortable. But then again, like, um, like for ages, like, I feel like it, it starts from home, honestly. Mm. Like, they see their parents being, like, hard, never showing emotion. And, like, for them, it's like, okay, this is how a man's supposed to be. But it's not. Like, mm. our, like, generation is evolving, like, every day. So I feel like people should start especially men start Jeez. talking about their feelings i like men that are emotional like macho men turn me off you think that's the same thing for other females too yeah mm. like some okay like when we say macho men we mean like these alpha males like i think you've seen it on the internet mm -hmm. going around when people like think they're the like alpha this and that i'm like ew like that is such a turn off mm. but when a man's like soft but like still like you know, has his masculinity, that, like, that's good with me. Mm. That's good with me. I don't like that whole, like, mm, like. and Maybe if you can never tough. talk about your emotions, like, you're you're clearly not, like, you're not there mentally yet. Mm. So it just, we are not going to click, because what are we going to talk about? <laughs> so what, a, what about females? Do you think females go through the same thing when it comes to mental health as guys, or females are more outspoken when it comes to it? Um, I think women are more outspoken about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it's not as hard just because we're already seen as like emotional beings, but it really depends. It all depends on your upcoming. There's some women that hide it very well because mm. that like they just can't afford to be in their feelings or they pour themselves into work, <laughs> yeah. like all types of different stuff. But yeah, there's. Yeah, I think for us, it's more common than men, okay. which is, you know, it, it's whatever. But I feel like everybody should 
mm. tap into there, you know? Because I feel like for females, y'all are just, y'all are more, y'all are closer with each other when it comes to mm-hmm. things like, girl, listen, let me tell you, you know? Yeah. And us niggas just, we smoke, we ball out, we argue, and we move on. I feel like that doesn't do anything, though. Like, mm. men, like, that that's a big thing that I keep seeing. Like, um, some of my guy friends that I'm friends with, I don't think I'm that close to them. But then, like, when it comes to, like, just personal things, like, they'll talk to me. Mm-hmm. And their guy friends, I'll be like, yo, like, I, I thought, like, you know, you'd talk to so-and-so about this. And be like, no, I'm comfortable talking to you more about that. Mm-hmm. It's because, like, men don't connect like girls. Like, you guys just, it's always like, yo, bro, what are you saying? And that's it. And I'm like, that's all your friendship? <laughs> like... Like, yo, you want to ball up? Yo, we're going to make money together. But then you, like, you never check in with each other. Mm. Like, ever. Okay. But also, like, I feel like, yeah, everybody, like, therapy is an investment. Mm. You guys should get into it. Tap in. Tap, tap in. in. Okay. <laughs> so, big macho woman, Raisa. Let's, let's talk about what you got going on. What do you do? What do you do? <sighs> what do you got going on? Um, I do hair currently. Um, I work with kids, but I don't really like talking about that because okay. it, it's just not out there like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I have a social media presence. Mm. I didn't know. Until what do you mean you guess? You know damn well you no, do. No, but like for me, I just like social media is for fun. Like mm. though, I don't really take in like what I do on there because for me, it's like, I guess it's like a public diary. <laughs> that's real shit. It's bad, but I guess it's a public no, that's, diary. That's good because like, when you put your opinions out there, you got other people that think the same way or like, yeah. yo, I've been on the same shit. I didn't think anybody else was. So like you say, you get tapped in with other people and you might build a connection off yeah, that. Yeah, I know. That's how it starts, though. But like for me, I, I don't think I if I start thinking like, oh, um, this and this person is watching me, then I'm just not going to be on social media because that's mm. nerve wracking. I'd rather just go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. Um, what was I saying? It was about um, social media presence. Yeah. I feel like if I start, like, if the numbers start getting to me, I probably wouldn't be on social media as much. Mm. And for me, like, like I said, it's honestly like a personal, not a personal diary. It's like a diary, just mm. opinions, like my own opinions. Because for me, I... <laughs> I love giving my opinion more than anything. Mm-hmm. So I guess social media is the spot for that. No, the thing is, I'm the exact same way. I promise you, every time you go on Twitter, you see my comments somewhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I love putting my two cents in. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, my nigga, I got to be heard. You know? Facts. I, I got to be and heard. And social media is there. I mean, if you're following me, you know what I'm going. Mm. You scroll the few things. Like. So, so with the whole um, wig business you got going on, where... Like, I know you just started it, but where are you trying to take it? Oh, my God. Um, So I follow a lot of, like, American hairstylists, and I've been doing my hair for a while. Mm. And, like, just America is so advanced in the hair business. Like, they mm. they can you walk out. You think more advanced than us? Way more advanced. Like, they got secrets that we don't know. Mm. And I've been studying that stuff for a while. Like, um, and also, like, I just want to bring, like, color to the city because a lot of people here like they'll just do like a black wig or like blonde or whatever and they'll just be satisfied but for me like i want to i want to be that stylist that you can come to with whatever like crazy ideas that you want to do because for me like i i like expressing myself as you can see with my nails we got the whole rainbow over here Mm -hmm. (laughs) but yeah like if i can bring that to the city like that would be like amazing because i I don't see anybody else doing that Mm. and also like wigs are protective style i i do not touch my real hair when it comes to all these crazy hairstyles i want to keep it healthy Mm. and also i like changing my hair way too much so yeah like just i want to get the city up on that do you think what you're doing is more predominantly for african-american females or any race could tap in with you no it's everybody okay because you like your hair is how you express yourself so even guys could tap in if you want to wear a wig yeah hey okay listen 
if you want to wear a wig, I got you. Yes, sir. <laughs> you, um, do you feel as though your prices are reasonable? Like they I, are, like for sure. At the same time, I know that you just started, but have you had anyone saying, "Yo, that's how much you charge"? Uh, let me get back to you. No, actually, um, a lot of people are like, "Okay, this is good. This is affordable," and I want to make it affordable because there's just um, it's different working in a hair salon mm. and working from home. Hair salon, obviously, the prices would go up just because you have to, you know make that percentage so you could get enough in the the hair salon could get their percentage did that for a little bit didn't like it so i'm doing it at home because i i honestly just want to make people feel good you know like you look good you feel good yeah and for a reasonable price because it's like you don't want to break your bank just to look good mm -hmm. and i know you know life is hard there's bills man like i you know okay. i want to do it for them no i feel you you um with this, you feel like you'd be staying in E-Town for it, or you could see yourself going to Van, going to Minnesota, like just traveling the world for it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Is there? Do you have any places in mind that you'd like to try to go to? Right now, the only place that I can even think of is probably like Atlanta, mm. but like not right now. I want to perfect my art first, you know what I mean? Because down there, like just watching them, it's nuts what they can do. Like, mm. sometimes I, I look at the work and I'm like, yo, are you sure this is a wig? Like, <laughs> so yeah. I want to get to that level um, and just, you know, then go down there and probably like, oh, my God, a big goal would be to do like Nikki's hair mm. or even Beyonce. Like Beyonce, like, I don't know who does her hair, but if I could just touch her head top just one, two time. Listen, I'd be set. Like, I'll, yeah. So right now, those, those are the type of artists you you wishing to get tapped in with. All the girl artists. Like, um, oh, my God. If I could do one for Kalani, like, I Jeez. love her. I love her. I, oh, my God. Just all the girls. Come uh, to me. Even the guys. If you want a wig, I got you. Uh, so <laughs> all your materials, all your materials for installation, where do they come from? Where do you get them from? Oh, I buy them from, like, local stores or Amazon or, like, the glue. I go to, um, I buy it from this, the lady that runs it runs, like, a huge Instagram page. And I buy from her because the glue's good. Mm. Like, it lasts six weeks. It's water resistant. You can work out in it and it no won't way. budge. Like, I, I love her stuff. It's, like, crack for hair. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So you're, like, the go-to go-to person for special occasions weddings birthdays like if, if i need anything are, are you ever gonna get tapped in with like other hair type of stuff like maybe dread retwist you know what i'm saying maybe even be able to do haircuts and shit can you see yourself expanding in this yeah um i could i'm learning how to braid more and more every day it's just not my favorite thing to do mm. <laughs> but i'm learning because obviously it's gonna like, I don't, what if I have an appointment outside of the city and I can't bring my braider with me? I'm mm. I'm going to have to learn those skills, you know? Yeah. So I'm practicing that for now, like, before it's even requested. You know what I mean? Mm. But, yeah, no. As for hair, like, cutting hair, my little brother cuts hair, which he's really good at it. Like, he picked up on it fast and he's talented. Sheesh. Like, so that's his forte. I don't think I want to do that. Mm. My thing, like, I'd rather do something I enjoy, which is just wigs. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Where, where did the love for this come in? Did it start when you was younger? Did it just hit you the other day? When when the love for it come in? Um, I've always done my hair just because I have, I have no style. I can't dress. It's, <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I can't dress. But, like, at least for me, like, I, I could do my hair and my face. The outfit won't matter as much because you're like, <laughs> I mean, it matters to some people. But for me, like, it's worked half of my life. But, yeah, like, as long as I look good up here, I don't care what I got. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Is there. OK, boom. Let me give you a special occasion. Mm. You're going. Uh, So let's say next Saturday comes around. You don't have any plans. All of a sudden it's Saturday, 830. All the girls hit you up. Yo, there's something going on crazy. Everybody's going to be there at 11. What would be your first 
look like what type of what would you have on you know what i'm saying like something last minute something quick to do it depends does um, it depend on like like where are you going what the scenery is gonna be like yeah but for me honestly like um you can never go wrong with black hair mm -hmm. but also it depends on like where i'm at like right now currently i'm rocking or i was rocking the purple yeah but i'm tired of it i wanna i wanna do different colors coming up soon but it really depends most of the time i just go with black mm. um yeah <laughs> do um the clients that you get do your clients have to be vaccinated or does that not really matter to you yeah, they have to be vaxxed just because mm. I have um, I have people in the house that oh, okay. are, you know. So do you run this business in your basement? It's done in your basement, the at your crib? No, I just have it, like, just in my living room. Oh, okay. Yeah, for now. Like, hopefully I, I get to, like, I'm looking to rent a space, but that's hard, like, with the economy right now. Mm -hmm. Like, everything's just... It's either ridiculous prices or it's just not in a location that I want. So for now, it's going to be my house. Okay. So now, now I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I see your YouTube. The <laughs> YouTube. Is it just you or is that you and your sister? It's me and my sister. Okay. I see, I see it going crazy. 1.2K subs. <laughs> I like how, how long have you been doing that YouTube stuff for? Um, when did we start? I think it was a little bit before summertime. Or it was during the summer. I can't remember the exact date, but um, yeah, at first it was me, Dacia, and Sandy. Mm -hmm. But Sandy just didn't. She's not as camera crazy, so we were like, okay, that's cool. So now it's just me and Dacia, and we feature people here and there. Um, but yeah, because <laughs> the reason why I'm asking that because me, I just started up a YouTube a little bit ago, a little bit ago, and I'm trying to build up also. Mm -hmm. So and I see in, in a short amount of time, you're already at like. 1k mm -hmm. you know so how do you how do y'all like how do you build up like that honestly um before it even started i i'm in school for marketing so i like i have to know that kind of stuff and mm. i i tap into like people's daily like needs or whatever um but before it started like my you have to have a niche we have a niche i don't know if you notice it's a reaction channel so if i posted like a fashion blog our subscribers would be like, uh, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't come here for that. So you have to have a niche and also like just be consistent. Mm. And just, I feel like because we actually really, like it It seems genuine or it's coming from a genuine place, like people fuck with us for that. I don't mm. know if I'm No, go ahead. Be yeah. A thing, be a thing. Yeah, they fuck with us for that. Um, but honestly, just being consistent. But it, it's hard, like, it's very hard to stay consistent because, oh, my God, I, I don't know if you've edited YouTube videos, but it's annoying. Oh, my God. There's some days where I just want to throw the laptop. I'm like, bro, I cannot. But then, like, you know, like they keep you going. Like I get people here and there messaging me. They're like, you guys have been gone from YouTube for like a week or two. Where Damn. are you? And I'm like, ah, that's a nice feeling. Yeah, because I do so many different other things. And sometimes you just don't want to get up and film and like just editing takes a long time i'm in school i have like different things i'm doing like youtube is for fun mm -hmm. so like for me like obviously it's a priority but i have like other things on top of that so yeah. like it's like okay we'll post so we can get to but honestly it would be nice if we could get a little one two video out every yeah. week damn <laughs> is there um do you plan on bringing your wig business into the YouTube world or is that two separate things? Um, I haven't thought about it yet, but if I were to, it would be a different channel. Oh, you, you start up your own little channel. Yeah, it'd be a different channel for sure. Because that, that channel is just strictly for like reactions. Mm. And like, like I said, like it's a niche. Like it just, they'd be confused if I just started posting me doing somebody's hair. Mm. Like, <laughs> like. Does, um. Uh, the 1.2K, is that majority coming from E-Town or is that all from Canada or the States? Oh my God. Where is it coming from? You know what's so funny? Uh. Um, we don't advertise that channel. At all? At all. When Sheesh. we drop a video, we just drop it. 
like um i like if you check my social media it's nowhere to be found mm. like even telling you i was kind of like should i i don't know Cause, yeah why because i don't know i don't like people watching me do that because if you've seen like the videos like obviously like it's just me going boy crazy or like you know and i don't want people to see that i don't know it's kind of like when you're into an artist and you just want to gatekeep them mm. but I don't know. It's different. I just, I didn't want people from here watching me do that. If I were to, like, put it out there, it'd be like, I, I don't know. I, we but didn't want to put that out there. But it's, the, it's, it's the internet. You don't think some way, somehow, one person from our city would have found it and then sent it to that guy. That guy would have sent it to five more people. Oh, if they find it, like, whatever. It's cool. I just, I feel like with the way we market it and like the audience that watches us i mean we do need to post it and like gather up that social media presence of those people and be consistent with it Mm -hmm. but for us it's been working so far just not posting um or even advertising that we dropped a new video and we're like kind of inconsistent with it Mm. so it would be just weird to post one day and then like post it the next month and be like hey guys we dropped another video like like it's just nah we have to figure out the schedule and yeah maybe in the future we will so but, so why do you think you're un- inconsistent is it just because like you said life just keeps hitting you literally just life mm. and also it's like we're in quarantine i don't get ready every day so it's kind of like oh my god like we have to plan out a day to um to film and also, my sister and I's schedule are very different. So, yeah, just finding a time to film and editing takes a long time. Mm. But sooner or later, we'll figure it out. <laughs> what's, what's your most viewed vid? And why do you think it's the most viewed? The first one. The very first one. The first one hit uh, 100,000 uh, views. Like, just like two months ago, I think, I yeah. believe. Sheesh. Um. And I was very, very taken away by that. Because I was like, like, when we, like, dropped this, it was just, it started off with my sister being like, oh, my God, like, you want to react? Or you want to make a reaction channel? Because my face tells everything. Mm. Like, if you say something or if you show me something. Dead ass. My face is going to show ass. you before anything. You're a person of action now, yeah. for real. And then, like, also, like, I love to give out my opinions. So she was like, let's just, like, you know, we thought it would be, like, just, you know, a little 100 views here and there. And then it kept going up. It kept going up. It kept going up. And I'm like, oh, my God. I didn't know that would happen. So, yeah, I guess we just need to keep consistent with it. Mm, 100,000. Shit. Yeah. Damn. Damn, that's crazy. Those type of things, it's like. Waking up the next morning to see that expression on something you never expected, mm-hmm. I'd be sitting there like, whoa. Because right now, with my whole YouTube thing, the numbers, it's all right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's nothing crazy. If I ever woke up one day and I saw 100K, whoa, my nigga, I'm quitting my job. Like, nigga, I made see, it. See, <laughs> nah, you got the wrong mindset with that. No, no, obviously, I'm just playing, but I'm <laughs> nah, just saying, I'm like, kidding. that'd be like, yo, nigga, nigga, I'm quitting my job. You know what I'm saying? But obviously, I wouldn't do some shit mm-hmm. like that. From, um, from the the whole wig thing, have you been profiting from it or the currency that you're getting right now or the bread that you're getting from it, is it just keeping your head above water? Um, I've been profiting from it, but not as much as I'd like to. But I like once I'm consistent with it, I know it'll be way bigger. Mm. But I do so many different things. Like I <laughs> like there's so much that I do that like I have to just to even start it, I had to use my own money to get that started. Mm. So, yeah. But Is there... Can you tell me some of the things that you had to get over when you, be, before you started that, the wig business? Because, like, for some people, uh, what are people going to think of me if I do this? Or what if I do this and I don't get the love that I... You know? Is there something that you felt like you had to overcome? Anything like that? Not... Because um... for me... With this whole podcasting thing, I didn't want to start it, put all this money into it, mm-hmm. and have nobody listen to it. But mm-hmm. at the same time, people don't owe you a listen. People yeah, don't owe you for like, sure. 
uh, about two months into this, I started telling myself people don't owe me nothing. I'm just doing it because I love it. And then that's when I really started enjoying this. Like, yeah. I enjoyed it at the beginning. But once I got that into my head, I'm like, yo, I'm really fucking with this. Yeah. You know? So is there any bridges that you had to cross or anything like that? Or is it nothing coming to mind right now? Honestly, um, not really. For me, it was more like, just finding the time because mm. I know I know I'm talented I know I can do it it's just finding the time and also like just juggling a lot of things um no I, I don't like to get into that mindset mm -hmm. my mindset is very positive aside from like my view on other stuff but when it comes to working I'm very like just I'm diligent <laughs> I know I'm skilled so like none of that comes to mind mm. but if it does i know like it's not my own thoughts like it's more like just my head battling with me but it's it's rare okay what you got any plans for 2022 for the coming year yeah just honestly keep working keep getting that bread um I'd like to get more trips in because I don't know. It's cold. Edmonton yeah. is cold. Edmonton weather, you can't play with that. It's cold. You'd have a lot of plans for a Wednesday. Wednesday comes around, it's minus 41. It's a Now you got to cancel storm. everything. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no. But that's all I got to ask you before I end this off. Is there anything you want to ask me? Mm, where do you see this going? Like, where do you want to take it? Known worldwide. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to have the same stats that Breakfast Club got going on. Like, I want to get to a point where my my word holds so much weight. Mm -hmm. Let me put it like this. There's this other podcast I watch. It's these two females. I think they're from Houston. It's called Poor two Minds. Two women. Two women. My fault. My fault. <laughs> my fault. It's called Poor Minds. Uh -huh. And just the other day, they started a few years ago. Just the other day, they sold out a whole arena just for people to hear them speak. No the way. The people in the crowd would ask them a question, and they just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. They say what they say. I'm like, that's it. I just, <laughs> but with this in the future, I want it to be to a point where, let's say, I get to the, I move to the states, and this and that happen. Yeah. Yo, you ever heard of Cover with Marlo or oh, that dude from Edmonton? Like, I want it to be, I want my name to be attached with the city. I want the city to be, like what Alfonso's doing, not like Alfonso's doing soccer, but like a little kid from Edmonton. What's Edmonton? I've never mm. heard of Edmonton. Well, what's over there, you know? I just want to be known worldwide, and I want I want to give my city a voice. That's that good. that makes sense. You I know? think you can do that. You, yes, you're sir. off to a good start. You know? And I feel like I can't do that unless I got my city with me. So yeah. that's why I'm trying to get a whole bunch of people tapped in, a yeah. whole bunch of people talking to me about what they do. Because at the same time, I want to show you that I'm fucking with whatever you got going mm -hmm. on. Even though I can never see myself doing it, that don't mean I can't still support you. Yeah, for sure. You know? But that's... Obviously, that'll take time. I'm giving myself two years to see what happened in the two years. Yeah. You know, but that's about Just it. Just be consistent. Yes, sir. That's what it is. Uh, where, where can people find you if they need wig installation, if they need anything? Uh, my hair page is called Styled by Risa. That's S-T-Y-L-E-D. Mm. <laughs> B-Y-R-A-I-S-S-A-A. I couldn't get the one A, but you know, we Fuck move. It. We okay. move. Okay. <laughs> it's your boy Money Making Marlo. It's your girl, Raisa. And I'm out.